Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. I'm sure you know where Revelation is. That's the last book of the Bible. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. And I heard a voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of our Christ has come or have come. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. Father, we thank you for this brief word. As your word goes forth, help us understand your word. Open our eyes to see the things you want us to see. Open our heart to receive your word. Speak to us through your word. Anoint my lips to declare your word as an oracle of God. And glorify Jesus through your word. And we thank you because it is done. We give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to speak briefly on the accuser of, of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. The devil has one full-time job. And that is to accuse you and I before God. You see, the scripture we read... He was describing the, 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 the enemy, the devil, Lucifer. And when he was kicked out of heaven, there was joy because he was described as the accuser of the brethren. He was thrown down because he accuses them day and night before God. Can you imagine somebody whose primary job description is to accuse you before God? Every time you commit a sin, either you think about it or you do it, the devil takes it as an evidence. Hey, God, you see? You see that your child? He just asked you for something. This is what he just did. He just caught somebody now. He just stole. He just did this. And when he does that, he's bringing the proof, the evidence. I mean, remember he's the one that even led you to commit the sin. Because when temptation comes, that's the devil that push you, and then if you yield to the temptation, he now uses it against you. And the Bible says he goes before God day and night to accuse the brethren. Every time the devil is coming to God, I mean, he doesn't really have access to God, but sometimes when he does, his primary assignment is to accuse you and I. He accuses you of things you have done and he accuses you of even the things you think. Because at the end of the day, he has access. He knows, I mean, the devil does what in politics they call opposition research. You know in politics, if you want to take down your opponent, you do a, an opposition research to find out what he has done before. Maybe when he was in primary school, he stole. Or he thought he did something. He had a DUI when he was 16 years. And now he's a responsible young man trying to run for governor. <laughs> and they will do an opposition research. Hey, when he was 16 years, he had a DUI. He drunk, he, he drove, he was driving under the influence. He broke the law. And they will use that to attack and to pull. Many politicians have stepped down because something from their past was brought up and used against them. The devil does that. He does opposition research. What has he done when he was a kid? What has he done when he was growing up? What did he do just yesterday? And when he gets that, he comes before God accusing you and I. The accuser of the brethren who accuses them day and night. So the devil is described in this scripture as the accuser of the brethren. The devil has a full-time job. His full-time job is accusing the brethren. Who is the brethren? You and I believers before God. Can you imagine that kind of job? Full-time job. He accuses them how many times? Day and night before God. Every time the devil has any opportunity to come before God, it's only to come to report. Some, you know, sometimes we have people in the family, like growing up, there are some of the siblings, maybe the last ones especially, the last one, they are always the one that will go and report to mommy or daddy, hey, you know what, this person did this, oh, this person did that. And you know, the, the other ones, we always not like, 
not really like they will not really like appreciate what she or he or she does because he is the one that will always go and report what they have done to their parents. That is how the devil has chosen. God didn't create him that way. He has chosen to be the accuser. So anytime you are doing anything, just know that the devil is watching and he's going to seek to use whatever it is he gets on you. Whatever he has on you, he will try to use it against you before God. But you see, thank God that Jesus has taken care of him. Amen. The blood of Jesus has taken care of the accusation of the enemy. Because every time God, uh, the, the devil comes before God and accuses us. Every time he comes to remind us of what we have done. Every time the devil tries to make you look like there is no more hope. God cannot forgive you anymore because you have sinned against him. You have committed this or that sin. Listen, for every time he tries to accuse you, just know that the blood of Jesus has already taken care of his accusation. How? Because the Bible says, and they overcame him. The same accuser. They overcame the devil, Lucifer, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So that means that as long as we repent of our sins and the blood of Jesus washes us, as long as the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary has been has been atonement for our sin, as long as it has been price for our sins to be forgiven that we don't even need to do anything for sins to be forgiven all we have to do is for us to repent from our heart to confess those sins and ask God to forgive us and when we do God forgives us because God is constantly looking on the cross He's constantly looking on the cross. The blood that was shed on the cross and the price that Jesus paid was all God was looking for. Because that is the price you and I will have gone to pay in hell. But God allowed Jesus to take up our sins and to go to the cross and God punish him. The same punishment we will have received in hell. God punished Jesus on the cross. He turned his back on him while he punished him the same way he would have punished us in, in hellfire. And Jesus took the beating, he took the, he took the shame, he took everything and then he paid the price and he shed his blood and he died on the cross and just before he died he said, it is finished. That means that the price of sin is paid. That means that God cannot forgive sin of the sinner that repent that means that you don't even need to do anything for God to forgive you all you need to do is to put your faith on the finished works of Jesus and you receive forgiveness so when the devil comes with us with his accusation listen the only way you can accuse you can overcome the accuser of the brethren is by the blood of Jesus amen be quick to use the blood against the enemy whenever he comes against you. Not even only going to God. Many times he doesn't even go to God. Many times he comes to you. He comes to you in your mind. He comes to you in your, in, in, in your conscience. He comes to you and begins to make you feel guilty. Make you feel unworthy. Maybe you want to pray. Say, yeah, you want to pray. What are you, what, what, what are you praying? What are you trying to pray? Do you think God will hear you? Yeah, you just told lie. Oh, you just did, did this. You did the other. And he will remind you of things that will make you feel unworthy. That will make you feel, feel, feel guilty. But listen, every time the devil comes against you with accusation and trying to accuse you in your mind, in your soul, or trying to accuse you before God, remind him, Satan, listen, the blood of Jesus has taken care of my sins. The blood of Jesus has taken care of my mistake. For it is written, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, Satan, I overcome you by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. I declare, and by the blood of Jesus, I am forgiven. By the blood of Jesus, I am cleansed. I receive forgiveness. I receive cleansing. You have nothing on me, Satan. Come on. Tell him and remind him that the blood has taken care of, of, of that issue, has taken care of the sin, that he has 
nothing on you. Remind him that he has nothing on you. Even what he thinks he has. Do you know that even when you, I love watching some of the documentary um, that the, on TV, you know. So when you are, uh, when they, in some cases, they are trying to get an evidence and then they, uh, they use some method that is not legal and they get what they think is the evidence they need. Do you know that there are some evidence you get when you get to the court? The court or the judge rejects it because the defense will make a, a, an argument that, you see, he obtained this evidence, even though it was an evidence obtained from the, from the culprit or from the one who is being charged, but it was obtained illegally because Assuming, for instance, you did not read them their memorandum right, as they are arresting you, you say you have the right to remain silent, and everything you say and do will be used against you in the court of law. That is, is called the memorandum right. It has to be read to you. Once they are arresting you, the first thing the law enforcement, the police will do, ma'am, sir, you are under arrest, and you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or do can be used against you in the court of law. If they fail to read that right to you, which means that it's a right, you have the right to remain silent. It's a right to remain silent. If they don't read that right to you and they arrest you and they take a statement and they do this and do that and when they get to court, do you know that the whole argument and case they have against you can be thrown off the window. If your defense lawyer said your lordship my client was arrested. He was never read his memorandum right. He never knew the right he had that he had the right to remain silent. And now they made him talk when he shouldn't be talking. When he should be talking to his attorney. In fact, they will also tell you that you have the right to an attorney. If you can afford one, they will provide you one. It's your right. So if they didn't tell you that, and you just begin to your, you just begin to leak, your mouth begins to leak, and they ask you questions, and you just begin to talk and talk and talk. Guess what? When the lawyer comes and he discovers that they didn't treat your right, and discovers that they didn't afford you the the opportunity to have your attorney present, do you know that the judge can throw away the whole evidence they brought against you? Or maybe somebody kind of like try to make you make a confession under duress. Maybe they put a gun in your head and you say, yeah, you kill him. If you don't say you kill him now, I'm going to blow off your head. And for fear of your life, you made, you wrote a statement. Yeah, so so person that died yesterday, I was the one that killed him. Because there's a gun in your head and you are fearful for your life. And you made a statement. And then they now use it and say, okay, if they now use that and go before the law court, do you know that the judge, the moment he learns that that statement and your, that's where your lawyer comes in, your the attorney will say, your lord, my lord, this statement, even though they are trying to use it against my client, now, he made this under duress. They had a gun pointed or they, they had something, they did, they, his life was on that, you know, threat, he, he didn't feel he has an option. So what he said was not actually the truth, even if it's the truth. The point that it was done under duress can make the whole, the, the, the judge can say, you know what? This is inadmissible. <laughs> you thought you have the evidence, you thought that you have the, the, the proof of something, but the judge can say that is inadmissible. We cannot miss it as an evidence in this court. And guess what? <laughs> that is thrown out. And if they can't find a tangible proof, evidence of something that was done, that was legally obtained, do you know what? There are many guilty people that have gone scoffing in the law court because of such technicalities, because of loopholes, things that were not done right by the prosecution. And then they get there and the judge say, you know what? According to the law, you can't admit this. We can't use this. And I'll say, the result, sorry, you you don't have a case because the, it's on the prosecution to prove beyond reasonable doubt that the culprit, that the man did something wrong. It's not the man. The man doesn't have to prove innocent. It is the one prosecuting that has to prove beyond reasonable doubt 
that this person committed this or that crime. When they are not able to prove it, not just to prove it, to prove beyond reasonable doubt, when they are not able to do it, you know a lot of, cri even criminals have actually gone score free. I watch some of these things on TV. A lot of criminals have gone score free because the prosecution either did not get the thing right, get their case right, or their evidence, or their argument, and at the end of the day, the jury will say, you know what, you are pretty, you can't go. <laughs> Everything they had, they thought they had, amounts to zero. Many times, that is what, it, what happens spiritually with the devil and with he accusing us. There are times when the devil comes and he brings one of the things is, is uh, the accusation against us. He didn't know that we have already repented. He didn't know that the blood of Jesus has already taken care of it. And he thinks, oh, yeah, 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 I got him, I got him. I, I, from, I see how this evidence from last year. And then he, he finds a motion to meet up with God. Say, God, I need to meet with you. I need to see. <laughs> he's, he's like the prosecution. And he wants to meet the judge. Because he says, he's thinking, I have this evidence. There's a whole fire. And you know what? The devil, because he's the father of life, he will even concord things. Even things you said or did, he would take them out of context. He did that to Jesus. <laughs> so, 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 so Jesus himself knows what he, do, what he can do. He knows he can twist things to mean what they are not even. And then he comes before God and says, yeah, God, you know you're a righteous God. You're, he will first quote God's word for him. You know your word says, the sin, the soul shall sin, that sin shall die. You know your word says that uh, that uh, no 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 sinner can see you. You know your word says, and God says, shut up. So I know what my word says. So what's it? Yeah, I have this evidence. This your son, this your daughter. This is what he did. This is what he committed the other day. And I have a, a evidence, exhibit A. And I also have this exhibit B, exhibit C, exhibit D. And as he's presenting the evidence. And ordinarily, you should be done with because most of the evidence and things he's accusing you of are things he has obtained. Maybe things you did, things you said, things you uh, thought, and all of those. But he didn't know that the blood of Jesus had taken care of it. Amen. As he finished his prosecution and said, my Lord, you are the righteous judge. So based on this evidence, based on this fact, based on this proof that I've pro provided before you of all that he has done, I, re I, re I demand, I request that you do the needful because you are a righteous judge. You need to condemn him. He needs to go to hell. He need, you need to punish him. You need to judge him because he has failed. He has broken your law. And God the judge, Jesus the judge will say, I hear you. I know all the things you said you brought against them. Some of them maybe they are right here, maybe. Or you know there's something you are missing. <laughs> you miss something. And, and what you miss is that my blood has taken care of this. Amen. They have repented of their sins. And I have forgiven them. Amen. My blood has washed away all of these things you brought. So based on that, this case you brought before me, it lacks merit. I love that law, that language in the law court. When you thought you have brought all your case and all the evidence, and the judge weighs it, and the, the defense will make the argument, and they will throw away the case. And they will say, you know what? This case lacks merit. <laughs> it does not rise up to the point where we even consider it. We don't even need to debate and argue and consider it. It lacks merit. So I'm not even going to sit to debate or to argue it. So God tells the devil, you know what? This case lacks merit. I'm not even going to sit to judge it because... All of this bunch of stuff you brought, proof of what you think you have, has been taken care of. Because my blood takes care of every sin. The moment they confessed that sin, the moment they repented of it, the blood took care of it. So you are coming with a stale news. 
what they call in the news world stale news news that have expired if i tell you trump is no more president now is that news it's not a news it's a stale news it doesn't everybody knows it so as they will say in nigeria not be today <laughs> so that means that the devil sometimes will bring God stale news trying to bring the accusations not knowing that it's been taken care of already and God in his mercy will acquit us will forgive us and will set us free that happens many times over and over again because the devil is constantly bringing us bringing accusation accusing us before the father day and night but thank God for the blood of Jesus because of the blood we are not condemned for there, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus for the Lord spirit of life in Christ Jesus have set me free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death is like the gravitational force. Every time you try to rise up, it pulls you down. That is the law of sin and death. The law of gravity. It keeps pulling us down. But thank God for the law of the spirit. The law of the spirit is like the aviation law. When the plane wants to take off, no power or force of gravity can pull it down. The moment it begins to take off, it just keeps going. The aviation law just kicks in and is able to fly and so on and fly for as long as it wants to until it gets to its destination before it lands. The law of the spirit is like the aviation law that allows us to take off and to soar in the spirit that we are not being able to pull down, to be pulled down by the devil or by the flesh. I've come to prophesy to somebody. I don't know the accusation the devil is bringing against you, but I've come to announce to you the blood of Jesus be for you. The blood of Jesus washes you when as snow. The blood of Jesus forgives you of your sins. The blood of Jesus uh, makes the difference. The devil have nothing on you. Come on, say with me now. Satan, you have nothing on me. The blood of Jesus that is shed on the cross of Calvary washes my sins, cleanses me from sin, forgives my sins. Therefore, what you have against me lacks merit. What you have against me, Satan, lacks merit because the power of Jesus has taken care of it. Father, thank you because your blood has taken care of my sins. The blood of your son Jesus has taken care of my sins. I am not in sin anymore. I am not bound anymore. I am free. I am a child of God. I am washed by the blood of Jesus. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. For there is therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. The blood of Jesus set me free. Therefore, I am free indeed. Before I round up, let me remind us something else. Do you know that just like the devil is the accuser of the brethren, some people, even in church, some believers, have taken over the devil's job. It's as if the devil recruited them and they have become the accuser of the brethren. Every time you go around trying to blackmail people, accuse people, trying to do the, you are doing the devil's job. And we shouldn't be doing that as believers, especially in church. We shouldn't be the one helping the devil to do his job. Romans chapter 8, verse 33. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Is it God who justifies? But the thing is that many times the devil recruits people and uses them to try to accuse others, especially in the body of Christ. That shouldn't be you. We shouldn't be doing the devil's job for him. Let the devil do his job and let's, let the blood of Jesus take care of him. But don't be recruited. Don't be an instrument in the hand of the devil to do his job of accusing the brethren of spreading false rumor, false information against people, against the brethren, against believers, against even ministers of God. Don't be the one the devil is using as his voice 
to do that because that is against God's will for you. Amen. Amen. Satan rejoices when he accuses. I mean, he takes joy in it because it's a joy. We should not take joy when we hear, you know, there are, there are people, there's a friend that I stop talking with. I don't talk with him because every time we get to talk, it's more like, it's, it's like doing the devil's job. It's like an accuser of the brethren. Always talking about, oh, some men of God on this, uh, this, oh, he's not doing it right. Oh, he should have done it this way. Oh, this one is not doing it right. I mean, you are just accusing, accusing, but you are not even doing a one-tenth of what some of these great men of God that have served their generation and doing their own thing. Now it's your, your turn. What are you doing? Nothing. So many times we need to cut off with people who their job is to accuse and to blackmail and to gossip. Gossiping about people's problems, people's issues is not supposed to be your job. The devil's job. The devil has enough job for, you know, in his hand. Don't help him do his job. Amen. Amen. So let's rem remember that every time the devil goes before God or comes to you, trying to accuse you, remember that the blood of Jesus has taken care of that. Don't let the devil, don't be silent when the devil comes to accuse you. Don't be silent when he tries to intimidate you. Don't let the devil harass you or intimidate you and cajole you and make you and shut you up and silence your voice because he thinks he has some evidence against you. Be quick to remind him Satan, get behind me. For it is written, he who the Son set free is free indeed. I'm free from whatever it is you're accusing me. The blood of Jesus has washed me from, the, from whatever it is you think you have as, as an evidence. And when you learn to fight back and talk back to him and use the word of God and use the blood of Jesus, he will leave you alone. But if you keep quiet... If you feel intimidated, if you feel he's, he, you know, he has whatever it is he has against you, he is going to keep coming at you. He's going to keep coming at you. And guess what? His goal is to silence you. His goal is to weaken your relationship with God that you can't even pray. If you want to pray, he reminds you, he says, why are you even praying? God is not going to answer. Remind the devil every time he speaks in your mind, in your head. One last lie I used to watch. I used to watch wrestling. I've been delivered from wrestling. I've not watched it for some time and I've survived. Praise God. Hallelujah. Maybe someday I'll make kind of vision watching it, but it's a miracle I've gone for most. I've not watched it and I don't even miss it. One of them, Randy Orton, when it's coming out, he will say, I hear voices in my head. <laughs> Whatever it is they are telling him. When you hear that voice, the devil is telling you in your head. Oh, you've done this. Oh, you can't do this. Oh, God, God won't hear you. God hates you. God, God has abandoned you. God is, when he's accusing you in your head, don't keep silent. Use the word of God. Use the blood of Jesus. Remind him of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, which is that he was defeated. Satan was defeated right here on the cross. Amen. Remind the devil of that and he will never mess with you. If you want the best way to kick the devil out when he comes in your head, remind him of the cross. Amen. Hey, Satan, why, why are you talking to me? <laughs> Have you forgotten what happened on the cross? Have you forgotten that Jesus defeated you? 2000, he, he disgraced you. He humiliated you. He beat you up. <laughs> He's going to leave you alone because he don't like being reminded of the loss he suffered on the cross. He doesn't like that. So if you are going to keep reminding him that, I'm telling you, he's going to leave you alone. You want Satan to lose your address? You want Satan to stop harassing you? Don't be a victim. Don't just stay and cry and say, Satan, why me? Oh God, why me? Leave me alone, Satan. No. Talk back to him. Remind him of what's happened on the cross. He hates to be reminded of that. Once you do, he will leave you alone. Amen. Amen. I believe this moment that God has given you a mind of victory Amen. over the devil. Not that you will have. You already have victory over the enemy. Amen. Even in his accusation, you have the victory. Amen. Stand together and declare with me. Stand right now and declare with me. Father, thank you for your word. Say it like you mean it. Father, thank you for your word. I receive your word by faith. And I thank you that the blood of Jesus has taken care of my sins, has taken care of my mistakes, 
has taken care of my errors, has taken care of my poor choices. Everything in my past that the devil is trying to use to accuse me in my head or before you, Lord. Right now I declare that the blood of Jesus that speaks of a better covenant than the blood of Abel. The blood of Jesus has taken care of my sins. The blood of Jesus has washed me from every sin. The blood of Jesus sets me free from every sin. Therefore, Satan, I declare, you have nothing against me. Satan, you have nothing against me. I silence your mouth right now. I shut your mouth right now. I know you are the accuser of the brethren, but right now I declare, I have victory over you. I overcome you, Satan. I overcome your accusation. And I declare, no weapon fashion against me shall prosper. No plan that you have against me shall succeed. You cannot accuse me anymore. For I am a child of God. I am washed by the blood of Jesus. I am sanctified by the blood of Jesus. I have the Holy Spirit of God in me. I walk in the light of God. Even if I sin and make mistake, my Father forgives me. I receive the forgiveness and the cleansing by the blood of Jesus. Therefore, Satan, you have nothing in me. You have nothing against me. Your accusation against me lacks merit. I therefore discharge them. I dismiss them by the blood of Jesus. I declare I am a child of God. I have victory over you. I am not a victim. I am a victor. Father, thank you for not listening to the enemy and his accusation. Thank you for washing me with your blood. And for giving me another chance. In Jesus name. Father I pray for your people right now. And I declare that everyone that has had this message. Lord we will walk in the truth of your word. I silence the voice of the accuser. In the lives of your people. Against them in their lives. In their, in their mind. In their families. Whatever it is. Even when he comes before you Lord. We silence the accuser right now. In the name of Jesus. And we declare that by the blood of Jesus. We have the victory. And we are walking in victory. And we thank you for it. I cover everyone in the blood of Jesus. And I declare this week as the month of September ends. Father, let there be testimonies. Give us supernatural testimonies in this month of September. In the next five days before the month of September ends. Father, let there be supernatural testimonies. Every remaining miracle for the, re for the month of September. Every remaining answer prayer that have not yet manifested. Let there be supernatural manifestation in the name of Jesus. I bless the rest of the month of September and as we enter the month of October there shall be mega testimonies. We thank you for it. For the rest of this year there shall be mega testimonies and we thank you for it. Blessed be your name O God. We give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus name. Amen. I cover you all in the blood of Jesus. You are going forth and you are coming forth the Lord's protection is upon you. The peace of God is upon you. The hand of the enemy is broken over your life. There shall be testimony.